Today, Sam Bankman fried pleads not guilty to charges contained in a new indictment. Coinbase takes a stake in USDC issuer Circle, and Darius Tabatabai of Vertex Protocol walks us through what brought down crypto prices in recent days. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Crypto prices are flat this morning as Bitcoin struggles to climb back above $26,000. Ether still traded at around $16.50, while Solana traded just below $20.70. Okay, let's talk about the latest headlines. Sam Bankman fried headed back to court today. This time he appeared before a federal judge to plead not guilty to charges contained in a new indictment. During that hearing, SBF's lawyer also told the judge that the former FTX CEO was subsisting on bread and water because he lacked adequate food at the Brooklyn Metropolitan Detention Center. That jail is where he's being held until his October trial. Next, Coinbase is taking an equity stake in Circle, the issuer behind the USDC stablecoin. In a blog post on Monday, Coinbase said the move reflects the company's belief in the, quote, fundamental importance of stablecoins in the broader crypto economy. Now, at the same time, the company has announced that they will close down the center consortium, a private governance organization for USDC, because they see regulatory clarity for stablecoins. Circle also announced USDC will be headed to six new blockchains in September and October. Last up, Kenya's government is reportedly launching a committee to look into WorldCoin. According to local news outlet The Star, the Kenyan parliament put together a 15-person team to investigate the crypto project backed by OpenAI's Sam Altman. The National Assembly speaker reportedly said the committee will have 42 days to examine the project before reporting back to the government. WorldCoin has faced mounting scrutiny over its biometric and data practices. We reached out to WorldCoin but haven't yet heard back. All right, for our main story, Crypto World's Tanea McKeel sat down with Darius Tabatabai, head of decentralized exchange Vertex Protocol, to get his reaction to the recent crypto sell-off. We've been grasping for volatility in the market, and we just have not seen it for many weeks up until the end of last week, when at one point on Thursday night, Bitcoin dropped as much as 9%. What happened there? Yeah, I think what you've seen over the last months and quarters is there's been a withdrawal of liquidity from the space and a kind of lack of participation. Partly that's resulted in sideways price action. Partly it's resulted in these very violent moves in one direction or another. So the market had got long on anticipation of the BlackRock ETF. Um, and basically we just hit a bunch of stop losses when SpaceX news came out, people freaked out and down we went. So where do we go from here? Because, you know, like we were just talking about, there hasn't been volatility. We've been waiting for volatility. There are several catalysts that the market is waiting on that, you know, everyone thought would provide some upside volatility. And what instead we got was a sell off. Um, so where do we go from here in terms of, you know, does this volatility stick around or did we just see one big drop? And now it's going to be quiet for a little bit until we get some regulatory clarity by way of a Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin ETF or some legislation. Great question. The million dollar question uh, or billion dollar question, maybe I should say. I think, as I said, you've seen a withdrawal of market makers from the space. Traditionally, they've been the ones who've added the liquidity that would buffer this kind of move. And, you know, you connected the dots there. With more regulatory clarity, you're probably going to see more liquidity. The other thing that could drive it is more money flowing into the space, which, again, probably comes with regulatory clarity. But there are other catalysts that could be the thing. So, like what? Uh, so the Fed um, had their minutes. Um, most recently, they were talking about inflation. I think they still got their eye on that. Um, it looks like rate hikes are going to continue. It feels at this point like the Fed and central banks around the world are looking to force a real repricing in equities and potentially commercial real estate. Until you see a correction in those markets, I doubt that they really turn the money printing on or at least start to drop rates. And I think it's very difficult for crypto to rally um, in that sort of environment where liquidity is becoming at a premium and 
uh, in institutional players are trying to lay their hands on dollars. So there are lots of things. I most have my eye on regulation and the Fed. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because that's actually the next thing I wanted to bring up because it did seem like the market was had sort of written off the idea of further rate hikes this year, um, you know, after some recent economic data. And then it was after the minutes that if you look at the price of Bitcoin, it seemed like it did. That is sort of when it started to drop was right after 2 p.m. that Wednesday. And it's like there was a delayed reaction or something. But, um, you know, say... What do you see happening? Should all of these positive catalysts that we've been watching for start to come through between now and the end of the year, which could be optimistic? Um, how does that exist with this new real rates environment that the Fed seems to be so focused on now? Because, yeah. because the, because those numbers were a big driver, you know, aside from the bad actors among the crypto lenders and FTX in 2022, uh, the rate hikes were a big down driver of the crypto price throughout 2022. Yeah, I think that's right. So um, crypto is a real liquidity trade, right? So the more money there is available, and that usually means interest rates lower, then crypto prices are going to go up. I think for now, I'm reminded an ex-colleague of mine when I first started trading used to say the Fed will keep doing what it's doing much longer than you think they will. And that counts for cutting as well as raising rates. And I think what we're seeing now is people started to discount the Fed and their uh, appetite for raising rates six months ago, a year ago. And you see they still sort of have their hand on the throat of the market for now. Um, I think until we see like a genuine downward trajectory for inflation, um, that trend continues. But when it turns, it's going to be very, very powerful for crypto. What does this mean now for the rest of the crypto market? Um, you know, maybe it's outside of the big drop that we saw specifically, but what's going on with altcoins right now? Because there has been going there has been a lot going on on that side with these various um, cases that the SEC is involved in. And, you know, I guess I'm wondering um, between the progress on those events and, you know, the movements in Bitcoin and what the Bitcoin dominance says about the rest of the market, what's sort of the state of the altcoin market today? Yeah, it, it's super interesting and varied, right? Because altcoins encapsulates everything from a token that's named after a dog all the way through to something like Ribble, which is being treated as a security. I think the one clear sort of meta trend, if you like, is that Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of considered a little bit boring by those who have been in the space for a long time at this point. So if you got into crypto because you're expecting outsized returns, and Bitcoin and Ethereum volatility has dropped below shares and stocks, you start to look at altcoins as an additional way to generate returns. And so I think until we see more trend in Bitcoin and ETH, you're going to see a lot more interest in these kind of meme coins, short-term volatility. It's very sentiment and momentum driven. So um, things like Pepe, which was a big hit recently, are going to continue to be big noise in the market. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.